starts right now. A man is in the hospital after being shot three times last night. We've got the details coming up. This morning, the January 6th committee awaits responses from House Republicans after issuing them subpoenas. Will they comply? And a new federal probe focused on former President Trump is now underway. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with that story from Washington. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at a humid 72 degrees right now, uh, but we're bracing for the real heat this weekend. Hey, good morning. It is Friday. It is the 13th, dare I say. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Wow. <laughs> Happy Friday, though. Yeah. Yeah. Not it's that Friday, bad. so yeah. that's that's. That's the good part of yeah. it. Yeah, yay, it's Friday. And then yay, Katie's joining us this Katie morning. Blake is good, here. Morning. good morning. Welcome. Good morning. David was asking me yesterday, uh, every time we had a, a forecast and a newscast, he was like, has anything changed? <laughs> No, and we're really not going to see a lot of change through the weekend. So if folks are finalizing their weekend plans, just know it's going to be hot. In fact, we'll start to bring those highs back up closer to the triple digit mark. So I shouldn't ask you that today? No, I would just save your breath. <laughs> I'm going to add, you know yeah, I'm going to add. Yeah, he'll, he'll ask you know regardless. I'm do it now, I'll yeah. Save your energy, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I'll it's see coming. if I can tweak a few things for you. But uh, Okay. No promises. Uh, yeah, this morning is going to be a lot like yesterday morning. We're starting it off in the 70s in most spots. We do have some upper 60s on the map, but it's as warm as 76 at Stinson, 73 in Castroville, also 73 at the airport. Humidity is high. Our dew points are in some spots pushing 70, and that's starting to go from muggy to oppressively humid. So when you step out this morning, you know that humidity will be there to greet you. We've got a decent breeze still hanging on this morning. South winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Another nice breeze will be with us throughout the day today. A lot of clouds. We cleared out nicely yesterday afternoon, but the clouds have built back in overnight. So we will start off with some cloud cover, but as we get into the afternoon, we lose the clouds, abundant sunshine, and here's where your high temperatures end up today. About where we were yesterday. A lot of us in the upper 90s, a few triple digits south and west of San Antonio. Thankfully today, just like yesterday, humidity falls off a bit during the afternoon and that'll keep our heat index readings just about where these air temperatures are. So no crazy heat indices today or this weekend, but as I mentioned, we do bring our highs back closer to the triple digit mark over the next few days. I'll have your weekend forecast coming up in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. San Antonio police say a 19 year old man was shot three times last night while trying to take some food to his girlfriend. Now, police say it happened on Rosewood Avenue. That's near San Pedro and Hildebrand. An off duty officer working security at a nearby HEB heard about that shooting and found the victim. The man was conscious when police and emergency me medical services arrived. He was taken to University Hospital and we're told he's in stable condition. Officers did not have any other description of that shooter. Now to an apartment fire that happened on the city's west side overnight. Firefighters believe it most likely started because of an electrical issue. It started at the complex on Border Brook near Timber Hill and Wurzbach Road. One woman says she saw the smoke. She banged on doors to get her neighbors out safely. You know, I called 911 and I'm knocking on people's doors like, hey, y'all gotta get out because it's a fire. Then it was kids in the apartment building. Good news is those kids were able to get out without any injuries. However, people in three units are having to stay somewhere else now. This morning, former President Donald Trump is at the center of a new grand jury investigation. The Justice Department is now looking into accusations that he mishandled classified documents taken from the White House and brought to his Florida home. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with the details. Today, the Justice Department searching for answers after box loads of classified documents were reportedly found at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Those sensitive documents discovered after Trump left the White House. The investigation issuing at least one subpoena to the National Archives, requesting interviews from former Trump aides and convening a grand jury. A Trump spokesperson responding, saying in part, President Trump consistently handled all documents in accordance with applicable law and regulations. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee issuing new subpoenas to four House Republicans and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy digging in his heels Thursday. It seems as though they just want to go after their political opponents. Days after the Capitol riot, McCarthy heard on phone recordings telling Republicans Trump bore some responsibility for the violence. I, I've, I've had it with this guy. 
uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. Also on that call, top Republican January 6th committee member Liz Cheney saying last year McCarthy's testimony is valuable. Should Kevin McCarthy be willing to speak, testify before that commission? He absolutely should, and, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he were subpoenaed. I think that he very clearly and said publicly that he's got information about uh, the president's uh, state of mind that day. All eyes on what those five House Republicans decide and what the repercussions could be if they refuse to comply again. The January 6th committee begins public hearings next month and a final report is due out this fall. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. It is now 435. Mercedes recalling 292,000 SUVs due to a potential problem which could cause the power brakes to fail. The recall covers 2006 through 2012 models of the ML, GL, and R-class SUVs. The company wants the owners to stop driving the vehicles until the potential problem is fixed. Federal regulators say brake boosters, which provide power assistance to the brakes, can corrode over an extended period of time, and that can let air into the system, weakening the power brakes. Drivers would have to use more force to stop the vehicle possibly leading to increased stopping distances. Mercedes will ask owners to go to a dealer for an inspection. If brakes aren't working well, boosters will be replaced. Mercedes will tow vehicles to the dealer for free, and there's no charge for the work. Louisiana state lawmakers made sweeping changes to a bill that would have prosecuted women seeking abortions. In a House vote last night, a provision was struck down that would have charged some women who have abortions with murder. The state representative significantly reworked that what would have been one of the most restrictive abortion laws in the country. In addition, the revised measure also does not outlaw contraception. The measure, as written, would also preserve some of the rights of parents to use in vitro fertilization to conceive a child. At least 11 people are dead after a vessel thought to be carrying migrants capsized near Puerto Rico. The Coast Guard said 31 people were rescued yesterday. U.S. Customs and Border Protection crew spotted the troubled vessel and people in the water yesterday morning. The people didn't appear to be wearing life jackets. The Coast Guard says the search and rescue operation is still ongoing. Customs and Border Protection and Puerto Rican police are also trying to help out. Time now, 437 and 72 degrees for now. Still coming up, how online pharmacies could be the key to cutting the cost of your prescription medication. Also next, a look ahead to the upcoming NFL season openers for the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans. And quick check of trans guide for you as you get up and get on your way for your Friday. Go now. Nobody else is out there. You'd be lonely driving this morning. <laughs> Might not be a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, not, not any traffic at 438 in the morning. Things looking good out there. Uh, also, not too bad right now. Uh, 72 degrees. We can handle that before the, the heat gets here. Katie, is anything different? No. No? Okay. <laughs> well, there you go, David. We'll be right back. Pro Football Coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will kick off their 2022 NFL season when they play host to seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At least it's at home. It's going to be a prime time on Sunday night football, September 11th special. This will be Brady's first comeback after he re un he, well I re retired, unretired. What did he guess? He unretired. He did that, of course, this offseason. He was retired for what, like a couple of days? Returning for his 23rd season in the NFL, and he's going to be 45 when he suits up against the Cowboys. Of course, this is a rematch of last year's thriller in Tampa. The Bucks won that one 31-29, where Brady and Dak Prescott combined for 782 yards passing and seven touchdowns. Looking for a repeat. Meanwhile, after back-to-back -back four win seasons and kicking off their 2022 season with a new head coach in Levy Smith, the Houston Texans are going to open their season hosting the Indianapolis Colts. It'll be in NRG Stadium on September the 11th at high noon. This is going to be the third time in franchise history the Texans are going to open the regular season against the Colts. It goes back to back meetings in 2010 and 2011 when Houston actually won both of their home openers against their divisional rivals. Houston had a really good draft. They've got a quarterback with a little bit of experience. So 
hopefully they can uh, have a little bit better season. High school baseball last night. They're in full swing. The playoffs are over at Northside Field. It was the Class 6A second round between Round Rock Westwood Warriors and the Clark Cougars. Top of the first, the Warriors on the attack, the runners on the corners. Matt Gula hits that slow grounder back to the bottom. They tried for the double play but could not turn it. That runner is safe at home. The Cougars ended up getting some more runs. In the top of the third, they had the runners on the corners again, and that was Ridge Morgan to Matt Gula for the fielder's choice. But the Cougars come back to win it 3-2, to two, so how about that? Big win with a walk-off triple. Nice. For the Cougars, so there you go. Congrats to Clark. Time now, 443 and 72 degrees for now. Prescription medications can sometimes cost hundreds of dollars. Coming up next, we've got some ways you might be able to cut those costs. Also next, how moms are using social media to help each other through the baby formula shortage. And welcome back. It's 445. Mothers are banding together to help other moms find baby formula amid the nationwide shortage. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, moms helping moms through the formula shortage. It really frustrates me to see that there are people who don't have their basic needs met. Communities coming together after panic and frustration as new parents from coast to coast confront those empty shelves, desperately searching for supply. A few weeks ago, I was able to find um, the option of buying in bulk, but I don't think that option even exists anymore. First time mom, Alea Gaines, going to great lengths to find formula for her seven month old baby Cairo. It was an intense experience. I even went as far as traveling outside of my city to try to find it, and I still couldn't locate it. And we'll have much more on these moms banding together, plus a live report on how the White House is responding to this critical shortage coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Many of you probably pay hundreds of dollars every month for prescription medications. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, if you're looking to save some money, the solution may be in online pharmacies. The price of prescription drugs is enough to make you queasy. Nicole Phillips takes generic Stratera to manage her ADHD, but she just can't afford it. Because of my high deductible, it was over $800. I stopped using because of the cost. The Kaiser Family Foundation found that three in 10 adults said they did not take their prescription as directed last year because the cost was too high. It's not just uninsured people who struggle to afford these. Many insured people have high deductibles that they have to meet before the benefits kick in. So what can you do? It can pay to look online. Retailers like Amazon and Costco offer discounted drugs, and there are more and more websites that do too, like GeniusRx, Honeybee Health, Scripco, Row Pharmacy, Mark Cuban's Cost Plus, and Health Warehouse. To see if the savings are real, Consumer Reports compared prices. Overall, we found prices online to be pretty low. They found substantial savings if you order multiple months. For example, at Row Pharmacy, a 30-day supply of generic Lipitor is $9.90. A year's supply is less than 20. On the downside, you might not find your exact prescription. Several of the sites that we checked aren't full-service pharmacies, so they may not offer insulin or even brand name drugs. They pretty much only offer low-cost generics. They also may not do as good a job as your local pharmacy checking for dangerous drug interactions. Bottom line, these sites may save you money, but if you have a lot of prescriptions, personal service may be best. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide right now. Looking there at 281 at Hildebrand where things are moving, there are people traveling at 4.49 a.m. right now. I'm not even going to ask Katie if anything's going to be different today because I already know the answer is going to be pretty much the same as we've had for the last three or four days. Yes. Except, I think, as the weekend gets closer, it gets a little warmer. Yes, it How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, there is something a little different. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, we'll inch back closer to 100 as we get into the weekend. And that means we start getting back closer to tying and probably setting some new record high temperatures. We did that last weekend. Uh, similar story as we head into this weekend. But there is something 
a little different to look forward to something that certainly doesn't happen all the time and that is a total lunar eclipse that will be happening Sunday night. This is late Sunday night, probably well after bedtime for a lot of our area kiddos, uh, but this will be happening um, starting around 1030 on Sunday night. This is a total lunar eclipse. What happens here, the Earth will be casting a shadow and then the moon is going to pass through that shadow on Sunday night and this always makes for I mean, it's just cool to see people like to try to take photos of it and things like that. Uh, here's your forecast for this eclipse viewing again. Sun goes down at about 819 on Sunday. Totality of the eclipse doesn't begin until closer to 1030. So again, this will be pretty late and then totality ends closer to midnight. Thankfully, sky conditions should be favorable for some pretty good viewing, mostly clear skies. I would expect some spots across South Central Texas to have completely clear skies by Sunday night. Otherwise, it will certainly be warm with temperatures in the 80s at that point Sunday night. So something a little different to look forward to this weekend. High temperatures yesterday, 96 in San Antonio, 99 Carrizo Springs, 100 in both Catula and Eagle Pass. Pretty similar numbers today. Maybe a change in a degree or two, but look for a high in San Antonio around 96 and a few triple digits certainly not out of the question south and west of San Antonio. Just like yesterday, our humidity will fall off this afternoon during the hottest part of the day. So our dew points this morning are well into muggy territory, but this afternoon as our temperatures start to climb into the mid to upper 90s, we'll get our dew points down into the 50s, maybe even the 40s in some spots, and that'll help to keep our heat in Index readings or our feels like temperatures from getting too sky high earlier this week. They were well above 100 degrees in some instances. Heat index numbers were closer to 110 degrees, so we're going to keep those numbers closer to the actual air temperature, and um, that's you know a little bit of a silver lining there. It's when those heat indices start to get really high that we have heat advisories issued and things like that. So we'll stay away from that today, but. It will certainly still be on the warm side. 73 now cloudy skies. Cloud cover will break up as we head into the afternoon at 73 in Pleasanton, 69 Kerrville, 70 in Fredericksburg at this hour, 76 Stinson. That's our warm spot. 67 Seguin and 67 Lost Maples. I mentioned we got a lot of cloud cover out there this morning, just like yesterday. It really starts to break up as we approach and then get past lunchtime today. Uh, notice though, few clouds moving in from the west as we get closer to 5 p.m. We do have another one of those setups today where we expect some storms to develop not only in far west Texas, but also over the higher terrain of northern Mexico late this afternoon, early this evening. So places like Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Brackettville, Rock Springs, you'll have a window for a shower or thunderstorm late in the day today. However, once we get past sunset, a lot of that activity will fizzle out and we don't expect any rain to get to the San Antonio area or I-35, but for some of our far westernmost communities, especially places like Del Rio and Valverde County, there could be an isolated strong to severe storm late in the day today, so we'll keep you updated there. Otherwise, just more heat today, 96 or high with plenty of sunshine once we lose the morning clouds, but thankfully lower humidity in the afternoon. And also a nice steady breeze in place today. South southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Look at your weekend to put it simply hot and sunny. Highs inching back closer to 100 degrees. And through the weekend, even early next week, we're talking tying or breaking records as far as our high temperatures go. Hot and sunny. Yeah. What time was it? 1029? 10. Yes. Totality begins at 1029 and lasts until 1154. So you'll be home in time to watch it for those who are already in bed. Yeah. And you can report back the next day on exactly what you saw. It'll start during the night beat on Sunday night. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Okay. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be talking about it then. So oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. You'll be seeing right. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. 453, 72 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at two new series debuting on streaming, The Time Traveler's Wife and The Lincoln Lawyer. If you are looking to beat the heat inside this weekend, there's a lot of new shows debuting on streaming services. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. So we've met them. Yes. It's a time travel love story. The Time Traveler's Wife debuts Sunday on HBO with stars Theo James and Rose Leslie playing a couple navigating the challenges of a husband who might disappear to another year at any moment. And they tell me there are some very specific rules in this universe. 
<laughs> he has no control over when or where. Or for how long. Or for how long, yeah. So then where is he? He also can't go anywhere outside his own life. Success is all about momentum. New today on Netflix, The Lincoln Lawyer was a popular book series, then a Matthew McConaughey movie, and now it's a TV series starring Miguel Garcia Rulfo, who tells me that to take on this role as a Mexican actor means everything to him. That's the great thing about the America, that you have everything from, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, you can... You can make it. Also new today, the kids in the hall are back for a revival of the beloved Canadian sketch comedy show that's on Amazon Prime Video. And Sunday on Hulu, the team behind the 2020 hit Normal People returns with their next adaptation of a Sally Rooney novel, Conversations with Friends. And happy birthday, Batman. Actor Robert Pattinson, the current caped crusader, is 36 today. While Late Show host Stephen Colbert is 58. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Can you keep up with all the Batman? Uh, I know it's kind How of how many hard. are there? They, they they've all been good. I mean, what do you mean in current time or like? Yeah, far, I mean it's like forever. every movie. There's a different Batman, oh. and there's like 15 movies. So that means 15 different bat. That's See, that's hope funny. the cave is big because there's a lot of Batman hanging out there. Uh, yeah, Michael Keaton, George Clooney. <laughs> Right. Be here a while. Yeah, we'll be here a while. <laughs> Time Four. now. Yeah, 458 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how President Biden is getting involved in making sure infant formula is safe and available for families across the country. Plus, a Texas-based music festival will soon be among those featured on Hulu. Details coming up in Text Bites. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide, Loop 1604 at Bandera Road. Looking pretty good. Also, I-35 at Cesar Chavez. Things are moving right now for this early Friday morning. We'll be checking in with Steven Cavazos, who's in the studio. Look at it. There's not a car on that road. On one that? of the roadways. Not one, not one car yeah. going what, whatever direction that was. It's a good time to travel. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, President Biden calls on major retailers to do more to help families purchase infant formula during this supply shortage. Outside with live cam looks pretty much like it has the last few days, except it's going to be a little warmer and we could be breaking some records this weekend again. Yes. Very and hot. it's it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> Friday the 13th. Are you superstitious? Uh, not really. It doesn't doesn't bother me. Uh, actually, I left work yesterday and I saw a black cat and I was like, "You're supposed to be here tomorrow. You're, you're a day early." <laughs> but we'll see what happens in the parking lot today. That may be a bad sign for Friday the 13th. The cat showing know. up early. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> didn't get it right. <laughs> no. Oh, and then the kitties. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the cat was probably like, "What? I can't hang out today." Um, <laughs> yeah, so watch watch out for those uh, watch out for those guys today. Uh, let's start you off with the pollen count. Of course, this is yesterday's pollen count. As soon as we get today's in, let's say between about seven and eight a.m., I'll send a push alert to the KSAT Weather Authority app so you can get the latest and greatest when it comes to the pollen. But everything was low yesterday, including mold, and I really don't see a reason why we would have a change today. But again, that pollen count will be coming in between about 7 and 8 o'clock this morning, and it'll be on the KSAT Weather Authority app waiting for you right around then. 71 at the airport now, mostly cloudy skies. The clouds rolled back in overnight. Thankfully, even a pretty good breeze at this hour. South-southeast winds 10 miles per hour, and uh, that helps because it's very sticky out there. Today, air quality will be at moderate levels, so not anything too concerning. And for the majority of folks, this will not affect us. But for those that are especially uh, sensitive to air quality um, or those that may have respiratory conditions, we do have ozone uh, issues today bringing that air quality to moderate levels. And you may also notice a haze um, on the skyline at times, especially as you take those big flyovers around town. We do have light concentrations of smoke in the air. It's being pushed in from Mexico due to some burning that they're doing there. This happened 
happens around this time every year. Uh, so it's nothing too concerning, but light smoke concentrations today and also through the weekend. So just keep that in mind. If you kind of notice a hazy look to things, uh, that's likely what it is. And that smoke also takes our air quality up to moderate levels. Again, not affecting the majority of folks. 96 your high temperature today after starting off with clouds and high humidity. Humidity drops in the afternoon. We lose the clouds as well. That drop in humidity will help us out with our heat indices, but still toasty with a high around 96. A nice breeze throughout the day. South southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast coming up here in just a little bit. But first, let's get a check of what's going on out on the roadways with Stephen Cavazos. Morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Katie Blake. Well, it is Friday the 13th, but drivers are in luck right now. We do have some quiet roads. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide, and you can see 90 West at Zazamora. Not a whole lot going on out there. 281 and Nakoma. Pretty quiet road as well, but just make sure you drive carefully to see some flashing lights out there off of 410 and Marbach. That's due to some road work that's uh, been ongoing throughout the night, and there it is from that Trans Guide image. Let's take you right to the map, though, because thankfully it's still young outside. The morning is still young, I should say, so we're not really seeing a lot of buildup with traffic just yet. As you saw in those Trans Guide com cameras, not a lot of folks out there this early, but just remember to stay alert and make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Let's take a look at those travel times right now because the journey from Bernie right now in those eastbound lanes is a 25 minute drive time. No need to hurry if you're coming in from Bolverde. 27 minutes right now. Looks like we're in the green there for our friends up there. 26 minutes on I-35 southbound if you're heading in from New Braunfels. So the morning is off to a pretty decent start, but as I mentioned, stay alert and make sure you plan ahead. Have those camera phones handy. We're going to be talking some road work coming up a little bit later on. David. Steven. Several homes destroyed in a fire north side last night. It happened just before 10 o'clock on Chipping. That's near Montgomery Drive and New World Drive. We're told no one was hurt. However, one firefighter did overheat and had to step away from that fire for a few minutes. No word yet on how that fire got started. A new contract for San Antonio's police department and the officers union passed. However, not everyone was for it. Three council members voted against the new deal. Councilwoman Phyllis Villagran suggested that vote was a vote to defund the police. Some people disagreed, including the Police Reform Group Act for SA. In fact, these officers are getting a pay increase, and we didn't even touch that at all. What we're talking about here is accountability, is transparency, is having strong civilian oversight. The new contract gives a pay increase to officers. However, it also makes it harder for fired officers to win their jobs back on appeal. This contract runs through September of 2026. This morning, President Joe Biden has directed his administration to work urgently to ensure that infant formula is safe and available for families across the country. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, the FDA is looking at ways to import more baby formula to ease the worsening shortage here in the U.S. with the possibility of loosening import restrictions. Ireland, the Netherlands and Chile are now identified as potential sources for more formula. We're going to work with manufacturers. We're going to import more uh, to expedite this as quickly as possible. President Biden Thursday said he spoke with manufacturers and the CEOs of Target and Walmart about ways to boost supplies. The out-of-stock rate for baby formula in the U.S. was more than 40 percent at the beginning of the month. My sister picked me up some in Arvada yesterday, my dad up in Thornton the other day. Ashley Lane in Colorado is one of the many moms struggling to find the formula her infant son needs. There was nothing left on the entire shelf. I took a picture and sent it home and I was like, thank goodness we have a couple cans left. When asked why the administration has not acted sooner, the White House said efforts had been underway for months. The steps the president took today are an acknowledgement and a recognition that more needs to be done, that we do not want parents, mothers, families out there to be stressed and worried about feeding their babies. This is not a third world country. This should never happen in the United States of America. The outcry is providing Republicans with another line of attacks against the Biden administration. Minority leader Mitch McConnell on the Senate floor yesterday read letters from war parents. We've been struggling to get formula for our granddaughter for months now. The situation has turned dire. And now Texas Governor Greg Abbott is calling the Biden administration reckless for providing migrants at the border with baby formula. A Texas congresswoman tweeted this image of a shelf full of formula. She says the photo was taken at a processing center in McAllen, Texas. A representative from the Hope Border Institute responded saying, quote, these children, all children, deserve access to full life, including food, shelter and love. The shortage is blamed in part on a recall back in February. The affected plan in Michigan should come back online soon, but it could take up to 
to 10 weeks for supplies to be restocked. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. It is 509 and 71 degrees. And still ahead amid Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter, the company is now announcing the departure of two top executives. And also coming up next, details on a special CPR class that can save the life of someone bleeding to death. And taking a look outside with live cam, a humid 71 degrees right now, but uh, looking forward to the heat, or I should say we're preparing for the heat. We'll be right back. Stop the Bleed is having a major event coming up on Thursday, May 19th. It is a training session to help bystanders learn about bleeding CPR. Many people are familiar with CPR to help the heartbeat continue. However, bleeding CPR is for an injury situation when someone is bleeding to death. Traumatic injuries are the number one cause of death in people ages 1 through 44. Experts say a person can bleed to death in less than five minutes. If we can stop the bleeding or slow down the bleeding so that there's a chance for EMS to get there, so that EMS can start infusing blood, um, that would be a major life-saving skill that any person could have. And right now you can visit our website at kset.com for information on this event, this event and anyone can sign up. Ooh, it's 5.13 on Friday the 13th. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you did notice that. <laughs> and still ahead, Mark Zuckerberg showing off his company's future VR headset. Plus, Hulu is going to be the official streaming service for three major music festivals, including one here in Texas. Dad, we got this. We got this. Let me check out the town, okay? We got this. We got this. We got this. Yeah! We got this. We got this. Life is for living. We got this. Let's partner for all of it. Edward Jones. Alivex. Its revolutionary rollerball design delivers fast, powerful, long-lasting pain relief. Alive it and see what's possible. Enjoy the ride, my dude. I'm good, my dude. My dude. Today's tech fight, staffing shakeups at Twitter. Two top executives are leaving the company. Twitter has also announced a temporary hiring freeze. It comes as Elon Musk tries to raise $44 billion to buy the company. Mark Zuckerberg has released a video teasing Meta's high-end virtual reality headset. The viewers never saw the actual headset, codenamed Project Cambria. You do see how it will allow virtual objects to be overlaid into real life. The headset will be released later this year. If you enjoy music festivals like Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo, and Austin City Limits, you can now enjoy them from home on Hulu. It's now the official streaming service for all three festivals this year and next. And guess what? On top of the performances, Hulu will offer exclusive behind-the-scenes content. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day and weekend. All right, let's check it on traffic. So far, so good. So far, so good, David. Let's get a look at the roadways. 410 at Ingram. Things are moving nice and full quiet right now, but let's get that wider look at Trans Guide. Show you how this Friday the 13th is shaping up. You can see not a lot of drivers out there at 281 at Hildebrand. So essentially, if you are an introvert like myself, you'll have the roads to yourself. So great place to be this morning. 90 West at Zazamoda. Not a lot of folks out there, but always be on the lookout. Although we're seeing some green, we know that there's still going to be some road work taking place throughout the weekend. Let's talk about what's happening here off State Highway 151 on the West side of San Antonio. Some signal work will be taking place. This will start today on Friday the 13th and wrap up on Monday, May 16th. Drivers keep in mind this is overnight, so we can expect that to be done during 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. There's going to be alternating, alternating lane closures in both directions at Loop 410. And if you have your camera app handy, open it up and scan this QR code. Give it a few seconds. That'll take you directly to the case at traffic page and that will have an updated list of closures that are taking place in your area. And of course, anything that could be impacting your drive time guys.
Very good. Thank good you, Stephen. Yeah. Hey, Stephen, thank you for saying you're an introvert yeah. because I am too, and I think it's assumed a lot of times that anyone on TV, there's no way they're an introvert, no, no. right? Yeah. yeah. There's only a few of us in this yes. room. Yeah, that's why I grab it. Yeah, I like David, to just set it home in I don't think you're an introvert. No. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a, you're just, at, you, you're sharing your But well, we all need those extroverts, right? Yes. There he is. We're balanced. Everybody, Everyone's there's balanced. balance in this room. There's zen. There is. Yes. Harmony. I mean that in the best way, David. Jeez <laughs> Louise. Uh, across the country this morning, we've got some precipitation across the plains and even into the Dakotas and Canada. There's actually a low pressure system here and a cold front. Unfortunately, this stays way to our north, so it doesn't do anything for us in terms of temperatures, not really in terms of rain chances either. Some scattered severe storms possible along this frontal boundary in the parts of the Midwest today. Out in West Texas, really the Concho Valley area, San Angelo, and then uh, a sliver of the KSAT viewing area, really just Valverde County. Isolated strong to severe storms will be possible later today. Let me show you future cast. So we've just got clouds this morning. We'll see the cloud cover gradually break up as we get into late morning and then early afternoon. So abundant sunshine after lunchtime through mid to late afternoon. I do think we could start to pull in some high clouds from the west as we get closer to about 5, 6 o'clock today because we expect some storms to pop up in West Texas and also over the higher terrain of northern Mexico late in the day today once we really start to heat things up. So places like Comstock, Del Rio, Rock Springs, Brackettville, Eagle Pass and Maverick County, you all have the best chance to see one of these thunder showers wander your direction and there is the potential that one or two could be strong to severe through about sunset. Now after the sun goes down, these storms lose all of their energy and we'll see them really fall apart before they can make a lot of eastward progress. So the potential for any rain or storms today is well west of San Antonio. We don't anticipate any of that activity getting to the I-35 corridor. That's reflected in the rainfall potential over the next week here. It's all limited to areas well west of San Antonio and this just um, not this does not bode well. Uh, it doesn't help us out with our current drought situation. So a lack of rain over the next week paired with this. The latest drought monitor issued yesterday. Uh, we continue to just be so, so dry out there and we really need rain in a big way. Unfortunately, it's not really coming over the next week. We'll just continue to be stuck with high temperatures above average for this time of year. Our average high is 86. We'll continue to trend about 10 to 15 degrees above that all the way through next week. 71 now at the airport, 74 Del Rio, 73 Catula. Dew points are high right now, but as we get into the afternoon, they're really going to start to fall off. So they're in the 60s and 70s this morning. As we get into the second half of the day, the hottest part of the day. These numbers drop into the 50s for a lot of us, which is not a huge drop, but it will be enough to take the edge off of the heat index. So our feels like temperatures during the hottest part of the day today really won't be too far removed from the actual air temperature. So that helps us out a bit. 71 at the airport now, mostly cloudy skies. The clouds are back, but as I mentioned, these really clear up quickly late this morning into the early part of the afternoon around San Antonio in the metro area. Here's your high temperatures today. 93 in Comfort, 93 in Bernie as well, 97 Floresville, 98 in Pleasanton. Thankfully, even though it'll be another hot day, another steady breeze with us today. South Southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour through the afternoon and through the evening hours. Look at your temperatures heading into early next week. They trend up a few degrees, but that will be just enough to get us back to near record high temperature territory. I wouldn't be surprised if we tie or set some new records over the weekend. I know that's not what anyone wants to hear. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. We'll, we'll be prepared for it because, you know, we're listening to you, so it'll be okay. Yeah, we're just getting an yeah. early jump on getting ready for, for summer. Yeah, maybe there'll be rain later, later. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Back to our earlier discussion, I always considered myself very quiet and reserved. What? Apparently <laughs> <laughs> not. No, sure. not a bad thing, but no, you're not quiet and reserved, David. That's, I don't think so. No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, but not even Steven. No, he says no either. Uh, 523 and 71 degrees for now. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at new Resident Evil series plus Doctor Strange is already making millions.
A first look at the new Resident Evil series on Netflix. Plus, Francis Ford Coppola has a new project. Here is CNN's Alicia Stanford with the Hollywood Minute. Billy, Jade, welcome home. New Raccoon City looks pretty idyllic when Billy and Jade Wesker arrive in 2022, but behind laboratory doors, something is going on and it's going to have severe consequences, not only for the residents, but for the world in Resident Evil. The eight episode limited series based on the popular video game and media franchise begins streaming on Netflix July 14th. You opened the doorway between universes. We don't know who or what will walk through it. One thing we do know, people are walking into theaters to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The latest Marvel release has earned more than $500 million worldwide, heading into its second weekend at the box office. <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola has the green light for his latest project, Megalopolis. The Oscar winner has cast John Voight and Lawrence Fishburne as the main characters in the drama about an architect who wants to rebuild a city like New York as a utopia following a devastating disaster. Production is scheduled to begin in the fall. In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Stanford. 528, 71 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why the U.S. is sending Ukraine mixed messages when it comes to joining NATO. Plus, we're going to visit with San Antonio boy who is getting ready to compete at the National Scrabble Competition. If you haven't seen him, you're going to be really impressed. Making headlines this morning, a plan to send aid to Ukraine has a rare bipartisan support, but it's taking a little longer than expected to pass. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 71 degrees, but we are mentally preparing for a hot, hot weekend. It's hot now. Eh, humid. And humid. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. It's Friday the 13th, too, by the way. Yeah, happy Friday. So I don't know what that means. Just, it's Friday. It's You're still suspicious. good. And did you show me your earrings? Oh. What do you have today? Yesterday was disco ball. Yeah, today's avocados. Today's avocados. Yeah, I couldn't find anything appropriate for Friday the 13th. <laughs> I was like, mm. you, didn't any, you didn't have any black cats you could wear or something? <laughs> no. They would have blended, they would have blended <laughs> in with my hair, though. <laughs> it would have worked. Yeah. All right, black so, cats. Katie, you superstitious? Uh, no. Not really. Would you walk in the path of a black cat? <laughs> uh, yeah. I love cats. Okay. Yeah. What about yeah. under a ladder? Why not? <laughs> wow. Let's go for it. Let's go. No fear. Here, I got a mirror here to break too. <laughs> yeah, bring it over. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is Friday. That's some good news. Getting the kiddos out the door this morning. Muggy, like Steph said, 70s for your out the door temperatures. South winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. We've got a little bit of a breeze out there this afternoon as everyone's heading home. Hot again. Highs in the 90s and plenty of sun, so we'll lose the morning clouds pretty quickly again on this Friday. 72 Canyon Lake right now, 70 Port SA, 70 Rio Medina. Our dew point temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s, so that's contributing to the humidity. And here's a look at our wind speeds. Calm winds from Bandera to Comfort elsewhere. A breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, closer to 15 miles per hour, places like Hondo there. Uh, the cloud cover will be pretty extensive again early this morning. And then as we get past lunchtime, we'll see plenty of sun as those clouds go away. Here's how your high temperatures play out on this Friday. 97 in Hondo, 98 Petit, 95 Seguin, and 96 New Braunfels as we wrap up the work and school week. Temperatures go up a few degrees over the weekend and early next week. I'll show you your weekend forecast coming up here in just a bit, but let's get another check of what's going on out there on the roadways with Stephen Cavazos. Thank you, Katie. Right now we are seeing just quiet roads. So far, so good. US 90 at 410. I-10 at Callahan, not looking too bad there. You can just see a few folks getting their morning started with us, hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee. The only bad luck I'm experiencing is that I'm out of coffee, so hopefully some other folks will be get to enjoy their morning morning with some caffeine, but as we take a look around town, things just look quiet so far. So let's get a look at the map, though, because although we see more green than anything else, unfortunately, we do have our first issue of the morning. Not a big one, but just something to be aware of. 410 westbound right there at Bandera Road, State Highway 16. We do have a stalled vehicle, so just make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway, and anytime you see those emergency lights, make sure to move over or slow down. Let's take a look at those travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City, because we are pretty green from 
Seguin with a 30 minute drive time right now. We're looking at just 21 minutes from Lavernia on 87 northbound, and it's a 28 minute drive for our friends down in Floresville making their way up to San Antonio. So just drive carefully right now. The morning is off to a decent start, but as always, there's still going to be some road work taking place. We're going to have more on that coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, it may be Friday the 13th. However, San Antonio police say luck was on their side. They managed to stop a wrong way driver and they managed to stop that driver without anyone getting hurt. That effort had officers scrambling along a stretch of Interstate 10 between the northwest side and the downtown area. Katrina Weber is live where it all ended near I-10 in Cincinnati. And Katrina, it sounds like this went on for quite a while. How did they finally stop him? Well, police had set up a blockade of sorts. They had their patrol cars uh, on the highway to make that driver and others either slow down or stop. They say they also were ready to use their spike strips if they had to. Uh, instead, that driver pulled off the highway. Police tell us where he was met by a whole team of officers. And one of the first things they did was to give him a field sobriety test. Police had first received a call about the wrong way driver shortly after four this morning. That was somewhere in the area of I-10 and Loop 410, about five miles away from where they finally caught up with him. Now, police say to make matters worse, they had reports of another wrong way driver right on his heels, but they say that person turned around on the highway the minute he or she saw officers. And while this was all going on, trans guide signs were warning other drivers about the danger. Now, for, uh, for that driver who police did stop, it's a bit of a bad luck day because officers told us that they do plan to arrest him on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The U.S. might be sending mixed messages about its support for Ukraine. A Senate vote on an aid package for Ukraine is getting pushed to next week. And as CNN's A.B. Kylie reports, the U.S. is supporting Finland's possible bid for NATO membership, but not Ukraine right now. Amid an increasing civilian death toll in Ukraine come possibly mixed signals from the U.S. In the Senate, a plan to send aid to Ukraine has rare bipartisan support. For heaven's sake... Let's get Ukraine funding done ASAP. And they need this help right now. But the chamber is unlikely to vote on the bill until next week. Lawmakers are working to bypass Senator Rand Paul's request for an oversight amendment. Another mixed signal involves Finland. Its president says he and the prime minister want their country to join NATO. Finland is a regional security provider and would further strengthen NATO as a future ally. The United States would support a NATO application by Finland and or Sweden should they choose to apply. But the Biden administration isn't voicing the same support for Ukraine's membership. It showed the double standard of the alliance. NATO allies have an obligation to defend each other. Sending alliance troops to Ukraine could start World War III. By contrast... It's hard to see what they could do to Finland that couldn't be pretty easily defended. Still, some see expanding NATO as a victory in itself. Putin was absolutely counting on NATO, breaking sort of faith with each other and not being a strong entity. And it's a perfect boomerang on him that we have new strong members in NATO at the end of this. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. As Americans face record prices at the pump here at home, the Biden administration is canceling three offshore oil and gas leases. The Department of Interior says there was a lack of industry interest in drilling offshore in Alaska's Cook Inlet. The two oil drilling leases in the Gulf off the coast of Louisiana have been the subject of lengthy court battles, which delayed development there, while environmentalists say it's a victory for climate change. The American Petroleum Institute is expressing concern. The Biden administration's five-year offshore drilling plan is set to expire next month, and there's no word about what's going to replace it. And not so good news for those about to take on student loan debt. Interest rates on federal student loans will rise by more than a percentage point due to action taken by the Treasury Department. Now that means college students will face the biggest percentage jump in the cost of financing their education since 2013. The higher rates only apply to loans taken out to pay the 2022-2023 academic year and do not apply to existing student debt. And a big mistake has cost the Mega Millions Lottery thousands in prize money and paid the players with losing numbers. The payouts were made after host John Crow incorrectly read the Mega Ball number on Tuesday's drawing. The first five numbers were called correctly, but then the gold Mega Ball was a nine. Crow called it a six. 
There was no winning ticket for the $86 million jackpot, but there were five other prizes for having the correct mega ball number. The New York Lottery paid more than $5,500 to players with tickets bearing the incorrect mega ball number six. The lottery then temporarily suspended prize payments for some tickets. However, New York lottery officials say they've now resumed Mega Million prize disbursements. The estimated jackpot for today's Mega Million drawing, $99 million. Sometimes it's confusing with the six and the yeah. nine because it's like it only has the line under one of the numbers, but there's a bunch of numbers on the ball. Yeah, I should have what? A yeah. line all the time, yeah. <laughs> just to make sure. Something, something like that. Yeah. Time now, 5.39 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead, how a major airline is upgrading its in-flight experience for most passengers. Also next, more on a San Antonio boy who is getting ready to compete at the National Scrabble Competition. And outside with live cam. Ooh, see, it's Friday the 13th, and there's like a reflection off those really dark clouds up there. It's kind of ominous. Spooky. On Friday the 13th. A young guy from San Antonio has a way with words and will use those skills this week at a national Scrabble competition in Washington, D.C. Ricky Rodriguez was diagnosed with autism at an early age and he visited with our RJ Markets to talk about how the game has helped him focus and made him one of the rising Scrabble stars in the country. 19, 20, 29. It's not every day you get to go one-on-one -on -one with a Scrabble prodigy. I'm trying to get um, lots of points. 24. <laughs> okay. 12-year-old Ricky Rodriguez is in the zone, strategizing and putting the winning words together in his head. I basically, when it's not their turn, I try to search for my rack for a bingo. A bingo is when all seven tiles are used in one play. Ricky's done that before, and now he's taking his skills to a national tournament. And we had a regular Scrabble set, and he took that out, and he would start playing games against himself. His mom, Erin, says Ricky competed in his first big tournament when he was eight, and won third place a year later in Philadelphia. He's played in events across the country and even in Malaysia. So our quick game at his northwest side home, not much of a challenge. I'm starting to think we should just end it right here because uh, you already know who's going to win. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Ricky is pretty humble, but Scrabble gives him confidence. He was diagnosed with autism when he was a toddler, and his mom says the game also helps him focus. His photographic memory, his word knowledge, his attraction to words and language and all that. His parents tell him his diagnosis won't hold him back, and playing Scrabble is all about fun, win or lose. We just try to focus on all the things he can do and learn. He is so cool when he loses or wins. So I just took on Ricky one-on-one -on -one in the official KSAT Scrabble Challenge of 2022. And after three rounds, he's beating me by 53 points. Needless to say, I think he's ready to go for this weekend. Reporting from the Northwest side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Wow, RJ ought to get that autographed. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> should. <laughs> he lost to the best. Congrats Good luck to, to that young guy. Yeah at the Scrabble competition, going all the way to Washington, D.C., yeah. that's awesome. Impressive. And he's been to Malaysia? Yes. For Scrabble? I'm already traveling for his competition. Incredible. Good luck to him. Yeah. Time now, 545 and 71 degrees for now. Coming up next, we're going to show you just how much more you're paying at the grocery store these days for basic items like eggs and milk and bacon. In your morning consumer headlines, Southwest Airlines is enhancing its in-flight experiences for customers. The low-cost airline says it will spend $2 billion on upgrades. Southwest plan includes installing USB charging ports into each seat, faster Wi-Fi, larger overhead bins, new entertainment and drink options, and a lot more. Southwest is going to start to roll out the new additions in the coming months. And the cost of groceries shot up nearly 9.5% last month compared to April 2021. That's the biggest annual hike in 41 years, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, breakfast is the meal getting hit especially hard. Eggs are over 22% over more expensive. Margarine, milk, bacon, and coffee also saw price increases. Consumers are also feeling the pinch when they go out to eat. Menu prices rose more than 7% over the past 12 months. When bacon, eggs, and Fruit Loops start going up, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. 
Time now, 548, and the roads don't look like a whole lot of trouble right now. Yeah, no traffic trouble here just yet, but we know that could change as the morning does roll on. But look a little bit busier out there. Let's show you what the commute is looking like and take that drive around town. 90 West at Zazamora. Again, just quiet roads right now. We're seeing more pavement than anything. The only difference now is more folks are waking up and getting their days started with us. So just remember to drive safe. And as we get that wide look at the map, yeah, no major problems to talk about just yet. But we still have this issue as you bring it in to 410 Westbound right there at Bandera Road or Highway 16 assault vehicle. So uh, as a friendly reminder, check those cars before you get out on the roadway and make sure that you move over or slow down anytime you see flashing lights. Also, quick reminder, there's going to be some bridge work taking place uh, this time off 281 over on the north side of San Antonio. Now, this is only a one day deal. It's from 10 in the part of that's just say 10 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon. There's a full closure of Wilderness Oaks intersection, so just be prepared for that. You may see crews getting out there a little bit before 10 this morning, so we'll be watching that closely and we'll see how that impacts the drive time. But as far as right now, things look nice and clear. Guys, good news for Friday morning. It's hot, Katie. Yes, it is. Uh, and folks, as they're heading out, make sure you grab your sunglasses that they have them in the car because you really won't need them on the morning drive. But by this afternoon, you'll definitely want sunglasses as uh, the sun comes out and heats us up once again. It stays hot through the weekend. I'll just go ahead and lead with that. Hot and sunny will be pushing some records this weekend. The record Saturday is 97. That's what we're forecasting. The record on Sunday, 96. We're going 98. So we're getting back closer to 100 degrees and likely breaking and setting some new records this weekend and early next week. Not all bad news though. We have something cool happening this weekend on Sunday night. It's a total lunar eclipse that we should have pretty good viewing for. So in this lunar eclipse, the Earth casts a shadow thanks to the sun and then the moon is going to pass through that shadow on Sunday night. So this is the setup, but it is going to be late Sunday night. So even though viewing will be good, it's past bedtime for probably a lot of folks. Totality of this eclipse begins at 1029. That's when it, it will be most obvious that this eclipse is occurring and then it ends at 1154 PM. So close to midnight temperatures in the 80s here Sunday night, and we do expect mostly clear to completely clear skies around San Antonio and also elsewhere across South Central Texas. Yesterday, another hot one, high temperatures 100 in Eagle Pass and Catula 96 at the airport, 95 New Braunfels and low 90s across the hill country. That's about where we'll be again this afternoon. Forecasting a high of 98 Uvalde, 95 Gonzales, 95, uh, 96 New Braunfels, excuse me, and 100 in Catula. Just like yesterday, humidity will fall off this afternoon. So you may have noticed that. I noticed it even by about 1.32 o'clock yesterday afternoon when I went outside. Humidity was down just a bit, and we will see that happen again today. Day. During the hottest part of the day, we'll get our dew points to fall briefly, um, but that'll help to keep our heat index readings or our feels like temperatures from being too high this afternoon. So last weekend and early this week, humidity did not drop off during the afternoon. And so we had some feels like temperatures approaching 110 in some places. That will not be the case today. It will still be hot out there, but we won't have those crazy, uh, crazy heat indices. So that's a little bit of good news. For now, it is still humid. Humidity doesn't really fall off until after lunchtime. 71 at the airport and mostly cloudy. It's 73 in Catula, 68 in Kerrville right now. 71 Uvalde, 70 Port SA, 66 in Seguin, one of the cooler spots out there. Also 66 in Bernie Stage. I use cooler uh, very loosely this morning. The cloud cover is back and it'll be uh, fairly extensive for the next several hours as the sun comes up and as we get closer to lunchtime, we lose the cloud cover, plenty of sun through late afternoon, and then we could start to pull in some high clouds from the west as some thunderstorms pop up over the higher terrain of northern Mexico, west of the Rio Grande, and also across West Texas. Through sunset, there will be the potential for some of these storms to impact our westernmost communities, places like Eagle Pass, Brackettville, Del Rio, uh, Comstock, Rock Springs. You all will have a window for a few storms this evening. After the sun goes down, those storms will lose all of their fuel, and we expect that to all fizzle out before it can make it to San Antonio and I-35. Not good news if you want rain, uh, but again, we expect the potential for any rain today to be way off to the west, and it is across Valverde County that a few storms, a few isolated storms could be strong 
too severe. So again, that rain chance today for areas well west of San Antonio. As for the rest of your Friday, 75 at 9 a.m., jumping into the 80s by lunchtime, clearing after lunch into the afternoon, 96 your high today. We will have a pretty good breeze with us all day long. South southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. That'll be true through the weekend as well. We've got the eclipse Sunday night. Otherwise, hot and sunny over the weekend and even into early next week. We will work through it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is building character. Yeah, I that's think a good, that's a good way to look at it, right? Yeah, well, if you say so. <laughs> I'm going with you on the. <laughs> yeah. Time 100, now. 100 degrees builds character. Uh, yes. But, you know, we, ha we have lots of character here in the San Antonio area. <laughs> True. Five, 54 and 71 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, eight, two, fireball seven, daily four, six, four, five, eight, fireball five. Cash five is six, 18, 20, 22, 35, Texas two step, seven, nine, 19, 21, 33. Coming up on our next half hour of GMSA, gone but not forgotten, how a local restaurant is honoring the legacy and memory of a longtime downtown performer. And a man being treated for life-threatening injuries following a fiery crash, where it happened and why the incident is serving as a reminder to slow down, especially in certain areas of the highway. And by now, if you've been in San Antonio long enough, you know where those areas are on our highways, a lot of them. Right now, things are looking pretty smooth, but at some point this morning, you're going to have to slow down. Stephen Cabasos has got the traffic for you coming up. Katie Blake is here with your weather forecast. It's going to be warm and getting warmer throughout the weekend. She'll be here in just a second with that. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. The city and its police officers have a new contract, but not all city leaders are on board with the new deal. That story is coming up. And President Joe Biden calling on manufacturers to do more to help families purchase infant formula. Just ahead, the latest on the shortage and what the FDA is planning to do in the meantime to increase availability in the coming days. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 71 degrees for now. We are bracing for the heat, but Katie Blake says it builds character, so we're ready for it. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday. It is May 13th, but don't let that scare you. No, happy Friday. Happy Friday the 13th. 13th. <laughs> For those of you, it doesn't bother you that much. Uh, I know Katie Blake is not superstitious. No, no, I don't No, I don't think so. You would walk under a ladder. Sure. You would walk in the path of a black cat. Okay, well, like, let's do one at a time. Yeah, not all, <laughs> not all together. <laughs> yeah, then we might be asking for something. Yeah, what happens all. if you do all three at the same time? I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever broken a mirror? Uh, don't think so. See, there you go. But <laughs> I the have. day is young, so. Have you broken a mirror? Uh-huh. Well, not on Friday the 13th, but. I'm going to move over here then. <laughs> oh, we're fine. All right. I told you about the black cat yesterday. That's leaving, right. Leaving the KSAT parking lot. I was like, you're a day early. Yeah. What are you doing here? It's kind of scary when yeah. the cat shows up. Don't hate on the black cat. No, I mean, I just told him he was fault. early. I just, <laughs> they just want some pets. They just yeah. want some pets? They just want some pets. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to start off with yesterday's pollen count. It was looking really good. And I don't see any reason why we should have any issues today. Oak has been gone for a while. See ya. Uh, molds were low yesterday. And of course, with no rain, don't see any reason why mold would spike. But I'll have the latest pollen count for you, likely sometime between 7 and 8 o'clock this morning. I'll send it to you via the Case Hat Weather Authority app. Make sure you have that downloaded and ready to go. 71 at the airport. A lot of clouds. Yeah, the clouds rolled back in overnight. Air quality today is going to be at moderate level. So not anything that's going to affect the majority of us, but for those that may have respiratory conditions or can be especially sensitive to air quality issues, just know that we've got some ozone around today and also a little bit of smoke. There's some fires and burning going on across Mexico. This is typical for this time of year, and this brings in a light concentration of some smoke for us today and also through the weekend. This is through the next 48 hours. So uh, any more dense smoke is going to be limited 
to the Texas Panhandle. So here locally, we're likely just looking at minor air quality issues and also a little bit of haze on the horizon at times over the next couple of days. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, your KSAT 12 hour forecast shows clouds this morning breaking up as we get closer to lunchtime. We'll start to climb into the low to mid 80s at lunch and then quickly into the 90s this afternoon as that sun really comes out. 96 your high today. A nice breeze. Southeast winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour all day long. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast coming up in just a little bit. But first, we got to get a check of what's going on out there on the roadway. Steven, how are things looking this morning? Well, I have a black cat and his name is Zach. He's Aww. not bad luck, but he's definitely very mean. But I love him anyway. Aww. Anyway, Aww. I just figured I'd throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, let's take a look at the roadways because thankfully, although it is Friday the 13th, we've said this before, but those drivers out there are in luck, at least from this view at Trans Guide. There's 37 at Carolina. Then you have 410 at Marbach. Some road work was actually taking place there and it looks like it has wrapped up. And US 90 at 410, pretty quiet right now, but let's get a look at the map because although we see a lot of green, we got to bring you in. Unfortunately, we do have our first crash to talk about here, and this one is off US 90 there at loop 410. Now, uh, we don't have any details on this crash, so we hope that the driver is okay, but we are going to work to find out some information. Maybe there's a view of uh, we can show you a little bit later on, but right now, just beware of that. We'll find out more details a little bit later. Let's take a drive over here. We still have this stall 410 westbound at Bandera Road. It's not been causing any problems, but it's been there for a little while, so just make sure you stay alert. And right now, no need to rush out the door if you're traveling in from any of these communities to the Alamo City. It's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton. 27 minutes on I-37 northbound, 19 minutes if you're traveling in on Highway 90 in those eastbound lanes, and a 16-minute drive time, little time from Lytle on 35 northbound. So no problems there, and 410 at Broadway looks like the morning is moving. We're going to have more updates right here on GMSA. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, two drivers lucky to avoid serious injury after a crash. It happened on Wetmore near Ridge Country. Police at the scene say a truck and sedan collided. The impact caused that truck to roll over. Officers say there were no injuries and they do not believe alcohol was a factor. In your top stories this morning, a teen girl who was lured out of a Mavericks game in Dallas ends up 200 miles away in Oklahoma being sold in sex trafficking. It's a story we first told you about on GMSA yesterday. Local child protection advocates with no connection to that case say it is important that parents know what their children are doing online. And so it's really important that parents are watching what their youth are doing online because 90% of the trafficking that we have in sex trafficking is starting online. Child Safe, a local nonprofit, urges families to have safe code words to use during emergencies. If your child disappears, be loud and vocal in getting attention in order to help find him or her. Also, know what your child's social media passwords are so you know where to start searching should something happen. Also, we're told hotel staff in Texas are trained to look out for sex trafficking victims. Shot three times while just trying to take his girlfriend something to eat. That is what San Antonio police say happened to a 19 year old man on the north side last night. Police say it happened on Rosewood Avenue near San Pedro and Hildebrand. An off duty officer was working security at a nearby H.E.B. He heard the shooting and found the victim. When police and emergency techs arrived, the man was conscious. He was taken to University Hospital and is stable right now. They do not have a description of the shooter, so they're still investigating this incident. Firefighters believe an apartment fire on the city's west side last night was most likely started because of electrical issues. This happened at the complex on Border Brook near Timber Hill and Wurzbach Road. A woman says she was driving by and noticed a fireball coming overhead on an apartment balcony. She stopped and started banging on apartment doors to alert those living there to get out safely. Firefighters say no one was hurt. And several homes on Chipping Street were destroyed in a fire on the north side last night just before 10. This is near Montgomery Drive and New World Drive. We're told no one was hurt. However, one firefighter did overheat and had to step away from the fire. No word yet on how that fire got started. San Antonio's police officers and the city of San Antonio now have a brand new contract. However, not everyone was for it. The majority of the city council voted in favor of that contract. Three council members voted against the new deal. Councilwoman Phyllis Villagran suggested the vote was a vote to defund the police. Some people disagree, including the Police Reform Group Act for SA. 
In fact, these officers are getting a pay increase and we didn't even touch that at all. What we're talking about here is accountability, is transparency, is having strong civilian oversight. The new contract gives a pay increase to officers. However, it also makes it harder for fired officers to win their jobs back on appeal. This contract runs through September of 2026. In your morning headlines, Dallas police are trying to track down the suspect who walked into a hair salon in the Koreatown area and fired off several rounds. Police say three women were injured. Their injuries not considered life threatening, though. Korean Society of Dallas is hoping officers catch the person responsible. The police chief says as of now, it is too early in the investigation to say if it was a hate crime. And a fiery explosion in Ohio proving to be a cautionary tale for drivers to slow down in work zones. Take a look at the video. A highway worker was on the way to pick up equipment when he pulled over on I-77 yesterday. A dump truck veers off the road and slams into the worker's vehicle and a massive fire erupts. Both drivers were injured. The worker is recovering and the other person suffered life-threatening injuries. The collision backed up traffic for miles and transportation officials in Ohio say this is a reminder why all drivers should slow down and pay attention. The crash is still under investigation. This morning, President Joe Biden has directed his administration to work urgently to ensure that infant formula is safe and available for families across the country. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has a story. This morning, the FDA is looking at ways to import more baby formula to ease the worsening shortage here in the U.S. with the possibility of loosening import restrictions. Ireland, the Netherlands and Chile are now identified as potential sources for more formula. We're going to work with manufacturers. We're going to import more uh, to expedite this as quickly as possible. President Biden Thursday said he spoke with manufacturers and the CEOs of Target and Walmart about ways to boost supplies. The out-of-stock rate for baby formula in the U.S. was more than 40 percent at the beginning of the month. My sister picked me up some in Arvada yesterday, my dad up in Thornton the other day. Ashley Lane in Colorado is one of the many moms struggling to find the formula her infant son needs. There was nothing left on the entire shelf. I took a picture and sent it home and I was like, thank goodness we have a couple cans left. When asked why the administration has not acted sooner, the White House said efforts had been underway for months. The steps the president took today are an acknowledgement and a recognition that more needs to be done, that we do not want parents, mothers, families out there to be stressed and worried about feeding their babies. This is not a third world country. This should never happen in the United States of America. The outcry is providing Republicans with another line of attacks against the Biden administration. Minority leader Mitch McConnell on the Senate floor yesterday read letters from worried parents. We've been struggling to get formula for our granddaughter for months now. The situation has turned dire. And now Texas Governor Greg Abbott is calling the Biden administration reckless for providing migrants at the border with baby formula. A Texas congresswoman tweeted this image of a shelf full of formula. She says the photo was taken at a processing center in McAllen, Texas. A representative from the Hope Border Institute responded saying, quote, these children, all children, deserve access to full life, including food, shelter and love. The shortage is blamed in part on a recall back in February. The affected plan in Michigan should come back online soon, but it could take up to 10 weeks for supplies to be restocked. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 6, 11, and 70 degrees. Enjoy music festivals like Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo, and Austin City Limits in the comfort of your own home. The details about Hulu's new streaming offer straight ahead. And coming up after the break, <clears throat> excuse me, special honor for Hispanic Elvis. It's set up at one of San Antonio's most popular downtown restaurants. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. We're starting at a mild but humid 70 degrees, and we'll enjoy that until we get to the 90s. We'll be right back. <laughs> a special memorial has been set up for a longtime fan favorite of visitors to downtown San Antonio. Mitiera is honoring John Esquivel, best known as Hispanic Elvis, with an altar. The popular Mexican restaurant has made an altar to remember the longtime singer who warmed the hearts of the community and tourists of San Antonio. The restaurant staff says everything in the tribute represents what Hispanic Elvis was about.
All right, let's check in with traffic. See what's going. It was really good for a while. What happened? Uh, I'm not sure what happened yet, David, but I know we do have a crash off US 90. Things have been looking OK from these trans guide cameras, but yeah, we are seeing some issues. There's US 90 at 410. Now this is an area where we see a crash that was reported from TxDOT, but let's go ahead and take you right to the map because not uh, no other problems elsewhere, but this is where TxDOT is reporting that crash. But as we just saw from that view of trans guide, it doesn't appear that there's anything out there. We'll continue to watch it closely, but make sure you do the same. Also watch out here. We still have the same issue 410 westbound at Bandera Road. That's stalled vehicle been there for quite a while now, but uh, make sure you plan ahead because there's still going to be some work going on here on State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio signal work that will take place today and wrap on Monday, May 16th. This will be over the weekend. Keep in mind drivers that's eight in the evening to five in the morning. That's when you can expect that alternating lane closure in both directions at loop 410. And as always, grab those phones and open the camera app. We have that QR code that you can scan right there that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that will have the latest on those closures in your area and anything that could be impacting your drive time. Katie Blake. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, let's start with a look at what's going on weather wise across the country. Other parts of the US more fortunate in the rainfall department. We've actually got an area of low pressure spinning across uh, North Dakota there uh, near Canada and that low pressure system has a cold front attached to it and that is producing some rain even early this morning across the central and even lower plains across parts of Kansas and Oklahoma today. Some scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible from the Great Lakes all the way through Oklahoma, uh, but we do have a very low risk of an isolated severe storm in one part of our area way west of San Antonio out in Valverde County. So uh, the concern for any severe weather is is very low and overall today's rain chance is going to be very low and limited to areas west of San Antonio. So let me walk you through future casts. We've got clouds this morning. They'll hang around. They'll really start to break up as we get closer to lunchtime and then we'll see plenty of sun as we head into the afternoon by late afternoon, early evening. I do think even here in San Antonio, we could start to see some of the blow off cloud cover from storms that develop west of the Rio Grande late in the afternoon, early in the evening through sunset. There will be the potential for one or two strong to severe thunderstorms to move into parts of Valverde County, cross the Rio Grande and bring some rain to places like Eagle Pass, Brackettville and Kenny County and even up to about Rock Springs. Notice though, as we get farther removed from sunset, which is at about 819, activity falls apart. These storms need the heat of the day to get going and then keep going. Once we lose that, they really fall apart. So we do not anticipate any rain getting to the San Antonio area or the I-35 corridor. And really, as we look at rainfall potential, not just today, but also over the next seven days, it's limited to areas really even west of the Rio Grande. We could have Again, a couple of showers and storms affect some of our westernmost communities, but overall the rainfall picture is bleak here over the next seven days, and that's not good news when you compare that to the latest drought monitor, which was updated yesterday. The change here is that this dark red color indicating exceptional drought as bad as it gets where the drought monitor is concerned. We've got more of that starting to pop up uh, along and west of I-35, even up into parts of the Hill Country, Gillespie County, west of San Antonio from Pleasanton, essentially all the way into Real and Edwards counties, and then a pocket of exceptional drought west of Catula. So uh, rainfall outlook is not looking good. In fact, really what we've got going for us, high temperatures staying above average all the way through really the next seven days. High temperatures this time of year, our average is right around 80 six will be about 10 to 15 degrees above that through the weekend and into next week. So right now at the airport, cloudy skies. We can see that there as we're starting to uh, get a little bit of light out there as we get closer to sunrise. 71 southwest wind, six miles per hour, 68 New Braunfels, 67 in Kerrville. It's about where our dew point numbers are too. Dew points are high this morning, so it's going to feel very muggy as you step out. As we head into the second part of the day, the hottest part of the day, our dew point numbers fall off just a little bit. That helps us out with our feels like temperatures. These heat indices should be about where our air temperatures are this afternoon, so it'll still be hot, but we won't have those incredibly high heat indices that start to get into heat advisory territory. So more of a dry heat 
this afternoon. Thankfully, another nice breeze with us today. Southerly winds will be about 5 to 15 miles per hour all day long and even into the evening. So those of you well west, keep in mind closer to the border of the Rio Grande could have a couple of storms late in the day today. Otherwise hot and sunny through the weekend. Lunar eclipse is Sunday night and into next week. The heat hangs around with highs in the upper 90s, guys. Katie. Speaking of the un lunar, lunar, lunar eclipse, we're talking a lot about that this morning, and it's happening this weekend, as Katie just mentioned. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're going to be speaking with an expert from NASA about the eclipse. They will also explain how the moon helps us to better understand other planets and moons in our solar system. That's today at 9 a.m. So is that a total eclipse of the moon or a total eclipse of the heart? Uh, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> 621, well, 70 degrees. Total lunar eclipse of the heart yeah. or the moon. Okay. <laughs> the schedule is out for the upcoming NFL season. Find out who the Cowboys are playing. Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. Sports is next. I started screening for colon cancer because of my late husband, Jay. I wish he could have seen our daughter, Ellie, get married on the best day of her life. But colon cancer took him from us, like it's taken so many others. That's why I've made it my mission to talk about getting screened and ask people to share their reasons why. I screen for my growing family. Being with them means everything to me. I screen for my girls. They're always surprising me. I screen for my son. I'm his biggest fan. If you're 45 or older and at average risk, it's time to screen. Today, there are more screening options than ever before, including Cologuard. Cologuard is non-invasive and finds 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. It's not for those at high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. Everyone has a reason to screen for colon cancer. If you're 45 or older, get started at missiontoscreen.com. And if you enjoy music festivals like Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo, and Austin City Limits, you can now enjoy them from home on Hulu. It's now the official streaming service for all three festivals this year and next. On top of the performances, Hulu will offer exclusive behind-the-scenes content. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will kick off their 2022 NFL season when they play host to the seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's going to be in prime time on Sunday Night Football, September the 11th. This will be Brady's first game back after he unretired this offseason. Now he's returning for his 23rd season in the NFL, and he'll be 45 when he suits up against the Cowboys. Remember, this is a rematch of last year's thriller in Tampa. The Bucs won at 31-29, but Brady and Dak Prescott combined for 782 yards passing and seven touchdowns. Meanwhile, after back-to-back -back win at four win seasons and kicking off their 2022 season with a new head coach in Lovey Smith, the Houston Texans are going to open their season hosting the Indianapolis Colts. It'll be in NRG Stadium on September 11th at noon. This is going to be the third time in franchise history that the Texans will open the regular season against the Colts. It goes back-to-back -back meetings in 2010 and 2011 when Houston actually won both of those home openers against their division rivals. High school baseball for a playoffs in full swing. Northside Field, it was the Class 6A second round matchup between Round Rock Westwood Warriors and Clark Cougars. Top of the first, Warriors on the attack with the runners on the corners. Matt Gula hits the slow grounder to the pitcher. He fires for one, coming home for two. Cougars try to get that double play, but the throw was too late. Round Rock leads 1-0. Top of the third, Warriors have runners on the corners again. Ridge Morgan hits it to Matt Gula for the fielder's choice. Another run scores, but the Cougars are able to come back and win it 3-2 with a walk-off RBI triple. Second round of baseball playoffs in 5A. McComb Cowboys hosting Canyon Cougars at the Northeast Side Complex. The Cougars already up 5-0 in the second. They add to it in the fifth. Runners on the third. Bryce Garza blasts the pitch to the gap between center and right for an RBI single. Next batter, Blake Hollingshead smokes this one right past the diving shortstop. 7-0 at that point. The final, Canyon wins it 11-0 in five innings. Very good. Time now, 627 and 70 degrees for now. Still to come, are you currently working and looking for a new job? The do's and don'ts you should consider. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this Friday morning, looking at there at I-35 Olympia and Loop 410 at Ingram Road. Things are moving and we'll be checking in with Steven very soon. 
And good morning. We're going to start this half hour with a look outside. Wow, the sun's coming up. It's still kind of cloudy. It's going to be warm and humid again today. Looks nice out there. Not too bad. 70 degrees. That's pretty good for these days. Apparently. That's true. We will enjoy that 70 degrees. It's 631. It's Friday morning, Friday the 13th. Friday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't say that too loud. Yeah, say it too loud. Scare somebody. <laughs> but nothing scary about today. It's just going to be hot. Yeah. Yeah. But we're used to that. I mean, gosh, we're going on a week now. We hit triple digits. Um, Got it. Check, there check. Go. There you go. Okay. I, we hear you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, not too bad. I mean, we, we were in the triple digits last weekend, so we're, we're kind of getting used to it, right? Yeah. It's still warm for this time of year. Seventies this morning, as you're getting everyone out the door, not much change from the past couple of days. We got the clouds, mugginess, and it is unseasonably warm. Also unseasonably warm into the afternoon. Hot again today. A lot of sun after we lose these morning clouds. 69 Holotus now, also 69 Portis A, 73 Stinson, and 68 in Bandera. Our dew point numbers in pretty much everywhere are also in the mid to upper 60s, so our air temperatures are pretty close to our dew points. That means it's really muggy out there. Winds were a touch breezy just a couple hours ago, and now we've got calm winds from Bernie Stage to Bulverde and Port SA. A lot of cloud cover as well, so feeling sticky and looking gray as you head out the door. By this afternoon, once we lose the clouds, the sun is out and our high temperatures are back in the upper 90s. Thankfully, humidity falls off nicely again this afternoon, and we'll have a nice breeze kick in as we get into the hottest part of the day as well. The heat continues through the weekend. Probably no big surprise there. I'll detail your weekend forecast for you coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's get a check of what's going on out on the roads now as some more folks head out the door with Stephen Cavazos. Thank you, Katie. Right now, 632. Let's get that look and drive around town. You can see that it is getting a little bit busier out there at 35 at Olympia, one of the busiest spots in town. But 410 at North at Ingram doesn't really look too bad out there. Uh, we don't have a lot of issues to talk about, thankfully, so just be careful. But let's go ahead and talk about what we're seeing at this hour. So a uh, wide look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot of problems, but we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown there off Loop 410 on the southwest side. We'll find out what's going on there, but let's go ahead and bring you in because what we are seeing is just stalls uh, right now. I 35 South and at Caesar Chavez Boulevard is one that we are adding to our list. If you've been with us right here on GMSA, you know that we've been talking about those stalled vehicles also had a crash earlier off US 90, but looks like those issues have cleared out. So the only present problem is going to be this as of this moment. We'll see how things shape up as the morning does roll on. Thankfully, no need to rush, but we are seeing the usual slowdown for our friends up in Bulverde. 28 minute drive time if you are going to be traveling into the San Antonio area. So keep in mind, everywhere else we're looking pretty green, but that usual slowdown is what we're seeing there on 281. So just drive carefully through there. One last look here in town. There's 35 at Caesar Chavez. We'll have to keep a close eye on things, but make sure you do the same guys. Thank you, Stephen. Several homes destroyed in a fire on the north side last night. It happened just before 10 o'clock on Chipping. That's near Montgomery Drive and New World Drive. We're told no one was hurt. However, one firefighter did overheat and had to step away from that fire. No word yet on how that fire got started. The U.S. might be sending mixed messages about its support for Ukraine. A Senate vote on an aid package for Ukraine is getting pushed to next week. And as CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the U.S. is supporting Finland's possible bid for NATO membership, but not Ukraine right now. Amid an increasing civilian death toll in Ukraine come possibly mixed signals from the U.S. In the Senate, a plan to send aid to Ukraine has rare bipartisan support. For heaven's sake, let's get Ukraine funding done ASAP. And they need this help right now. But the chamber is unlikely to vote on the bill until next week. Lawmakers are working to bypass Senator Rand Paul's request for an oversight amendment. Another mixed signal involves Finland. Its president says he and the prime minister want their country to join NATO. Finland is a regional security provider and would further strengthen NATO as a future ally. The United States would support a NATO application by Finland and or Sweden should they choose to apply. But the Biden administration isn't voicing the same support for Ukraine's membership. It shows the double standard of the alliance. NATO allies have an obligation to defend each other. Sending alliance troops to Ukraine could start World War III. By contrast... It's hard to see what they could do to Finland that couldn't be 
pretty easily defended. Still, some see expanding NATO as a victory in itself. Putin was absolutely counting on NATO breaking sort of faith with each other and not being a strong entity. And it's a perfect boomerang on him that we have new strong members in NATO at the end of this. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. As Americans face record prices at the pump, the Biden administration is canceling three offshore oil and gas leases. The Department of the Interior says there was a lack of industry interest in drilling offshore in Alaska's Cook Inlet. The two oil drilling leases in the Gulf off the coast of Louisiana have been the subject of lengthy court battles, which delayed development. While environmentalists say it's a victory for climate change, the American Petroleum Institute is expressing concern. The Biden administration's five-year offshore drilling plan is set to expire next month, and there's no word about what will replace it. And this morning, former President Donald Trump is at the center of a new grand jury investigation. The Justice Department is now looking into accusations that he mishandled classified documents taken from the White House and brought to his Florida home. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with the details. Today, the Justice Department searching for answers after box loads of classified documents were reportedly found at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Those sensitive documents discovered after Trump left the White House. The investigation issuing at least one subpoena to the National Archives, requesting interviews from former Trump aides and convening a grand jury. A Trump spokesperson responding, saying in part, President Trump consistently handled all documents in accordance with applicable law and regulations. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee issuing new subpoenas to four House Republicans and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy digging in his heels Thursday. It seems as though they just want to go after their political opponents. Days after the Capitol riot, McCarthy heard on phone recordings telling Republicans Trump bore some responsibility for the violence. Uh, I've had it with this guy. Uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. Also on that call, top Republican January 6th committee member Liz Cheney saying last year McCarthy's testimony is valuable. Should Kevin McCarthy be willing to speak testify before that commission. He absolutely should, and, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he were subpoenaed. I think that he very clearly and said publicly that he's got information about uh, the president's uh, state of mind that day. All eyes on what those five House Republicans decide and what the repercussions could be if they refuse to comply again. The January 6th committee begins public hearings next month, and a final report is due out this fall. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Stop the Bleed is having a major event coming up on Thursday, May 19th. It is a training session to help bystanders learn about bleeding CPR. Many people are familiar with CPR to help the heart continue to beat. However, bleeding CPR is for an injury situation when someone is bleeding de to death. Traumatic injuries, the number one cause of death in people ages 1 through 44. Experts say a person can bleed to death in less than five minutes. If we can stop the bleeding or slow down the bleeding so that there's a chance for EMS to get there, so that EMS can start infusing blood, um, that would be a major life-saving skill that any person could have. Oh my God. And you can visit our website at kset.com for more information on this event and how you can help save someone's life. Anyone can sign up. And happening today, some tattoo shops around San Antonio are celebrating Friday the 13th with discounts and specials. Some tattoo shops typically have a pre-made list of flash tattoos for patrons to choose from, and they usually cost about 13 bucks. Keep in mind, some of the shops have rules that require a minimum $7 tip, while others charge a service fee, but rules vary from shop to shop. For more details, check out the story on kset.com. Some of those shops get pretty crowded. There's one close to downtown, close to Quesa uh, on San Pedro that gets it gets pretty, crowded yeah, on yeah. Friday the 13th. Well, when they have these offers, yeah. So I wonder what they're giving, like maybe a black cat tattoo or <laughs> about a ladder. But like what they ask for, we, we should take a survey, right? A ladder and a cat and a mirror. And a mirror. Yeah, all together. <laughs> 640, 70 degrees. And looking for a job while you're still employed. After the break, we're gonna have some tips for you. 
An August 2021 poll found that 65% of employees surveyed were actively looking for a new job. If you're thinking about jumping ship, there are some do's and don'ts you might want to consider. Sarah Costa explains. You have a job, but you want a different one. So how do you go about it? It's just mentally, it's hard, it's draining. You know, at the end of the day, if you're a full-time job, you know, to, because finding another job is almost like a full-time job in itself. Looking for a new job when you have one can be tricky but doable. First, don't tell your coworkers you're searching unless they directly ask you. Many companies will let you go if they know you're looking elsewhere. You can also ask your potential employer to be discreet. If you don't make this clear, word might get around that you're looking for a new job. Also, don't job hunt with company resources. You do not need to rob the company of their time and say, I've got a doctor's appointment. Just be honest. Instead, set up interviews and calls during off hours or lunch and avoid using company email or phone numbers. Be sure to name former employers as references. Most hiring managers understand that you're not comfortable using those from your current company, but do let your references know you'll be listing them and continue to work hard in your current position. I need to do the best I can while I, while I am still here and honor your position. And also too, you don't wanna check out and you don't wanna burn any bridges. Experts say when you plan your job search is also important. August is traditionally a good month to begin looking because the number of active job seekers typically drops, but the number of available positions usually remains steady. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Roads are looking good on those trans guy cameras. <laughs> Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, we're not going to push our luck over here, but we are thankful that we are seeing some quiet roads from Transguide. Let's get that view around town, and you can see that it is that time of the day. Morning rush is already here in 1604 Pandera, looking a little bit busier out there as we are getting a look around town. But be on the lookout. We've talked about some of the issues we've seen. Uh, this is the newest one we are adding to our list. 410 Northbound there at Valley High Drive on the southwest side. A crash being picked up and reported by TechStop. Now, I haven't been able to see anything just yet from those Transguide cameras, but just be on the lookout. Drive over here shows a stall also off I-35 southbound. It sees our Travis Boulevard. It's not causing any issues, but we're starting to see a little bit of the slowdowns that are popping up right here on our map. As we get that wide view, you can see it there off State Highway 151, also on the northwest side at 1604 near Bandera. So just drive carefully out there this morning. So far, so good from these trans guide cameras. One last look around town. The morning is moving, guys. Good news. And David, I know you're excited that Katie's going to talk about something else, not the heat. Not the heat. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's the lunar eclipse. Yes, the <laughs> lunar eclipse. Uh, we've been talking about this for a few days, something for folks to look forward to over the weekend. So, yeah, we won't just focus on uh, the heat that will be hanging around through the weekend, too. We've got a total lunar eclipse that will be happening late Sunday night. What happens here, Earth will cast a shadow thanks to the sun, and then the moon is going to pass through that shadow shadow late Sunday night and it looks like sky conditions are going to be pretty good for any viewing that you may want to do. Again, this is probably after bedtime since it is a school night. Uh, totality will begin at 1030 or 1029 to be precise Sunday night and then end around 1154. So just before midnight. So this will be late, but we expect to clear to mostly clear sky Sunday night. So viewing should be pretty good there. That's not always the case for us. So uh, some good news as far as that total lunar eclipse goes. Yesterday's high temperatures, we did have a few spots in the triple digits, Catula, Eagle Pass, everyone else 90s, 96 at the airport, 98 in Pleasanton, and then some low 90s across the hill country. That's about where we'll be this afternoon. So yes, it is going to be another unseasonably hot day, but just like yesterday, our dew points take a nice little dip during the hottest part of the day today, down into the 50s, maybe even a few spots in the 40s this afternoon. And what that does for us is it kind of brings in the, the dry heat, so it takes the humidity away, and it also takes those really high heat index values out of the picture. So last weekend and even early this week, humidity really didn't drop off as much in the afternoons, and we had some of those heat index readings or feels like temperatures up well above 100 degrees, some spots closing in on 110. That will not be the case this afternoon. It will feel like where the actual air temperature is as we get those dew points down just a bit. So a little bit of good news. You know that saying, well, it's a 
It's a dry heat. That's what we'll be contending with this afternoon. This morning, though, different story as you're getting everyone out the door. Just know you're going to feel that humidity right away. Temperatures are in the 70s and we do have a good amount of cloud cover out there this morning. It's just shy of 70 in Hondo, 68 in Kerrville, 75 in Eagle Pass, down at Stinson, 73, 68 Bull Verde, 68 uh, up in Kerrville. So a lot of cloud cover around this morning. It'll be fairly extensive for the next few hours as we get closer and closer to lunchtime. It'll start to break up and just like yesterday after lunchtime, we're going to have a lot of sunshine to help warm us up. Look what happens. So as we get closer to uh, let's say five, six o'clock, we we'll may have some high cloud cover moving in from the west. That will be because we expect some storms to develop way west out toward the Rio Grande over the higher terrain of Mexico through sunset this evening. A strong storm or two could affect places like Del Rio, Eagle Pass, uh, Brackettville there in Kenny County, potentially even as far east as Rock Springs. Uh, after we get past sunset, storms lose the heat of the day and any activity that develops way to the west this evening is expected to fall apart. That's why we don't anticipate any rain making it as far east as San Antonio. But again, as I mentioned, an isolated strong to severe storm can't be ruled out way off to the west for Del Rio, Comstock and Valverde County as some storms fire up this afternoon. Today, noon, 83 degrees, 96 your high temperature. After we shake those clouds, we really boost those temperatures. Lower humidity though, that's some good news and also a nice breeze. South southeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour uh, as we get into the hottest part of the day. So that breeze will be there to help us out this weekend. We start to get closer to record high territory. We're likely going to tie and set some new records this weekend into the early part of next week as temperatures inch back closer to the triple digit mark. Ooh. Okay. Triple digits. A little early for all this, but it is. I guess we'll deal with it. <laughs> like I said, builds character. Just conditioning. Lots ourselves. of character. Yeah. Lots of character here. <laughs> Need that. <laughs> it is 650 and 71 degrees. And how we treat our little girls, how we speak to them, and what we expect from them can impact them for the rest of their lives. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to raise strong, confident, and courageous girls. Back outside with live cam. Sun's up, rooster's crowing. Time to get going. <laughs> I like it, David. I don't know where that came from, but you know. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the latest on the baby formula shortage. The White House is now stepping in, trying to help fill those empty store shelves, how parents are helping other parents meet the critical need for their babies. Also, airlines predicting near, near pre-pandemic travel levels as the summer travel season heats up, why a travel agent might be key to helping you find a great deal. That and so much more right here on GMA. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. At the day on GMSA at 9, we're going to be talking to a local doctor about teens' mental health. With the normal challenges of being a teenager on top of the pandemic, our kids have been through a lot these past couple of years. So a local doctor is going to explain what signs parents should look out for and how to help their child. Once again, that interview is coming up today at 9 o'clock on GMSA at 9. And right now at 655, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Thank you, David Seth. Let's get one last look around town. There is uh, just some light traffic there at 37 at Pecan Valley. As we get that drive, you can see that not a lot of folks from that shop, but 35 at Walsham. We can expect things to get pretty busy as the morning does go on. Be on the lookout. We are still watching this crash here at 410 Northbound at Valley High and still have this stall over here at 35 Southbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard, Katie. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, folks, if you haven't had a uh, head out the door yet, make sure you grab your sunglasses. You may not need them this morning. You will want them for the drive home. That's for sure. A couple of border storms can't be ruled out late today. Expect to stay dry around San Antonio. Hot and sunny this weekend. Unseasonably hot. You guys, our highs this time of year on average are down in the mid to upper 80s. We're about 10 to 15 warmer than that. Mm, it's going to be right. hot. Well, I kind of like the was like the 70s or the 60s, you know, for the for the morning hours. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. We can like handle it. that. And hopefully it's not going to be too bad at nine o'clock as RJ and I are going to be out at the Special Olympics at Mortgage Wonderland. We're going to be broadcasting live from out there on KSAT 12 News at nine. So join us and we'll show you some of the fun activities and yeah. some of the some of the athletes out there. Yeah. Well, Katie said the weather will be good for you. Perfect. For that time. <laughs> Thanks so for joining. Y'all come out. The weather's going to be great at Morgan. <laughs>